Hello, hello, hello. This is Stories for Kids with me, Morel Podcast. And I have my story bell as ever. Ring a ding, ding a ding, ding a ding. Story bell. And of course, Birdie is along with me. Hello, Birdie. Ba, ba, ba. Let us go. We are continuing with the Nutty Squirrels. I hope you do remember them. The Nutty Squirrels. We're talking about Hazel and Bushy Tail on an adventure. What's happening with them? Well, let me continue. I hope you are sitting comfortably. I do hope so. So, Of all nice things to do, one of the very nicest is to go travelling, to see what kind of things grow in faraway places and how other folks plan their cities. My, what fun Hazel Squirrel and Bushytail had. All day long, They explored new trees and ran along strange fences and peered into yards where children they had never seen before were playing. Once, they ran into a garden where some little girls were having a tea party. The children called to the squirrels and held out sweet, sticky things for them to eat. They were scampering back along the wall when a thoughtless little boy, who had not been invited to the party, threw a tiny stone at Bushytail. It hit right in the centre of his tail. Bushytail gave a startled little cry and jumped down off the wall, Hazel following close behind The little girls jumped up and ran too. They wanted to do something to help if they could. But the squirrels ran up the opposite side of a maple and were soon out of sight. Bushytail was not waving his tail so proudly now. It was hurting terribly. Hazel took her blue-bordered handkerchief out and wrapped it around the hurt place as best as she could. Oh, bushy tail, she sobbed. How I wish my mother were here. She would know just what to do for you. And great tears began to roll down her cheeks. It made bushy tail feel so badly to see his little playmate unhappy that for the minute... He forgot all about his sore tail. He put his arms around her soft neck and wiped the tears away with his red bordered handkerchief. Perhaps we'd better go home, he whispered in her ear. You see, he had forgotten about his dream tree now. So they scrambled down the tree trunk again. And then it suddenly dawned on them that they had no idea where they were or in which direction the park lay. They asked a sparrow, but she did not deign to answer them. They asked Robin, but she was hurrying home with a worm in her mouth and could only mumble something which sounded like yeast. They asked a pussycat and she said if they would come home with her first, she would look it up in a book she had there. But Hazel did not want to go, for she whispered to Bushytail, she has eyes like a witch. So they ran on a little further until they came to a hat lying upside down on the ground. It was warm and soft inside and Hazel thought it would be a good place for a little rest. She was beginning to feel very tired. 
Bushytail had lost the handkerchief off his tail too and it was hurting again. So the two little squirrels rolled themselves up into two dear little balls and Hazel spread a lovely tail over them to keep the wind off. And before you could say Jack Robinson, they were both sound asleep. When Mr Smith came back after his hat, You can imagine how surprised he was to find it had a a new fur lining. How I wish Alice could see them, he thought. Then very carefully, so as not to frighten them, he spread his coat over them and started for home with a queer-shaped bundle in his arms. Guess what I have, he cried as his little girl ran to the door to meet him. Ice cream, she screamed. Guess again. Kittens. You're warmer, he said, but not right yet. Then, as he carefully lifted up his coat, a baby squirrel she cried, and clapped her hands and jumped up and down for joy. Of course, the ride had awakened the squirrels. They were still more frightened to be in this strange house, with strange people standing around looking at them. They huddled very close together inside the hat, and would not eat the nuts Alice brought them. Have you ever been so scared? You could not eat. Don't you think they would be more comfortable in a regular bed? Alex asked her father and he agreed heartily. So she ran and got her doll's cradle and tucked them in carefully between the white sheets and rocked them just a little so they would think they were in the branches of a tree and feel more at home. Alice's mother had to remind her several times it was her bedtime, too, and she so hate to leave her dear little playfellows. By and by, Mother Moon looked in at the window. Quick as a flash, both squirrels jumped out of the cradle and ran to ask her the shortest way home. They found the window just a little open. Oh, you can imagine. They did not stop to say goodbye to Alice or think to thank her for the supper they had not eaten. Outside, everything looked very strange and unreal. They had never been out alone at night before. Do you know why everything looks so different at night, even though it is most as light as day? It's because the shadows the moon makes are blacker and each one seems to hide something alive. Hazel and Bushytail ran as fast as their little legs could carry them. They were too scared to even ask Mrs. Moon the shortest way home. Presently, it began to rain, and Mrs. Moon went inside to get out of the wet. Two little streams of tears began to roll down Hazel's cheeks. If you have never been homesick, You have no way of knowing how unhappy these poor little lost squirrels were. It is a much worse pain than cutting one's finger. Something hurt Bushy Tail inside so much he wanted to cry to. But he had to be brave and try and comfort little Hazel. Besides, 
they had only one handkerchief now. You remember Hazel had tied hers around his sore tail and he had lost it. Presently, they came to the edge of a woods. But Hazel would not venture in. She was afraid some robin would think they were the babes in the woods and cover them with leaves. Oh, such queer things are happening to us now, she said. Mr. Bat was passing by and he saw them huddled together between the rails of a fence. Thinking they were the lost children of his neighbour, Mrs. Squirrel, he hurried off to tell her. Now, only the week before, two of this poor lady's little ones had got caught in a trap. She had scolded, coaxed, and begged the farmer's boys not to carry them off, but they had paid no attention to her. And when Mr. Bat told her what he had seen, she jumped right out of bed and ran down the tree without stopping to take an umbrella or put on her rubbers even. Of course, she was disappointed when she saw only Hazel and Bushytail. They are city squirrels, she told Mr. Bat. We have only red ones here in the woods. I can't imagine how these little squirrels got so far from home alone. How worried their mothers must be, she thought to herself, and that settled it. She took them by the shoulders and shook them very gently. And when they opened their eyes and saw the firefly and Mr. Bat and Mrs. Red Squirrel for just a moment, they thought they were dreaming. But when Mrs. Red Squirrel questioned them, all she could make out between their sobs was that they were lost and wanted to go home. You poor dear little things, she said, hugging them in her soft arms. Come home with me tonight, and we will help you find your mothers in the morning. I can tell you it seemed good to the little runaways to be among kind friends again. And when Mrs. Squirrel saw four little squirrels all curled up together in her house. She was most as happy as if they had been four red ones instead of two red and two grey. Oh, should I continue? Should I continue the story? Why not? Let me continue and then we'll end the story. So let's continue. What's going to happen next? It was so much darker in the woods than in the park. The little city squirrels could hardly believe it was time to get up when Mother Red Squirrel called them. But after they had washed the sleepiness out of their eyes, they could see little pink patches of sky through the leaves. And they knew the clock was not fast after all. It took them much longer to dress than usual because they had not stopped to brush their tails out the night before. Hazel's was dreadfully matted down and Bushy's was full of burrs. How it did hurt when Hazel, as carefully as she could be, helped him pick them out. But he bravely choked back the tears and blew his nose very hard. He did not want his new friend to think him a baby, of course. Even their breakfast was different. They had country beetles, nice, white mushrooms and crisp, fresh apple seeds. 
And after they'd eaten and eaten, Mrs. Red Squirrel asked her little guests many questions. What their names were, where they lived, and how ever did they get so far from home? How the two little squirrels' eyes popped out as Bushytail told them of their home in the park, built for them out of boards and nails. He told how the caretaker came around every morning with a cup on a long pole and left a fresh supply of peanuts on their back porch. And he told of the wonderful dream he had about a tree where all kinds of nuts grew side by side on the same branch. I was so tired of peanuts, he added. I set out to find the tree, but somehow got lost. And then his voice became so shaky, he couldn't tell any more. Mother Red Squirrel helped him to another fat beetle and said as soon as she had her work done, she would see what she could do about it. So many of the wood folks are moving south for the winter, she said. I'm sure I can find someone who will be going your way. Now, Mrs. Screech Owl had seen Mrs. Red Squirrel hurrying through the rain the night before with neither umbrella nor rubbers. So she said to herself, Oh, this looks very queer. I will wait opposite the squirrel house, for I must know all. And presently, the entire woods was awakened by Mrs. Screech Owl's shrill voice calling, Extra! Extra! Mrs. Red Squirrel has city cousins visiting her. Of course, this is not true. But extras seldom are accurate. Anyway, Mrs. Red Squirrel thought she never would get her work done. She would not believe me if I should tell you how many times the doorbell rang. First, her neighbour on one side dropped in to borrow a pattern. Then a neighbour on the other side came over to return a book. Then friends from all over the woods just happened by and always after a second or two they would say, "Um, I hear you have company from the city. And then Mother Red Squirrel would have to stop work and tell all about it. But the worst of it was nobody knew the way back to the park. Pretty soon, Mother Red Squirrel had an idea. Mr. Bat is a great traveller, she said. Even if he does go to places only at night, I like him. Now, Nobody likes to be waked out of a sound sleep to be asked question. Mr. Bat blinked his eyes very hard, though by that time the sun was too bright for him to see a thing. And at first he said he didn't know the way either. Then Mrs. Red Squirrel flattered him a little and told how she had asked everybody the way to the park. And nobody knew. I felt sure you'd know, she added, at which Mr. Bat remembered he did, and promised to take the little runaways home just as soon as it should be dark enough. When Bushytail and Hazel learned that they were going home that night, They jumped up and down for joy. Oh, my birdie wants to jump as well. They jumped up, up, up and down. (laughs) Up and down for joy. I forgot to tell you 
Mrs. Red Squirrel's two children. They were called Pinky and Rusty. They were such lively, frolicsome children that you just couldn't help but laugh to see them. And pretty soon, Bushy Tail and Hazel had forgotten all about how their parents must be worried. How would it be if we all went on a picnic today? Asked Mother Red Squirrel. I know where there are hazelnuts. I need not tell you what they answered. So she gave them each a little basket and took to herself and whisk. They were springing through the air, oops, leaping from the ends of tethering branches or spinning along the tops of fences in a jiffy. By and by, they came to a lot of bushes and Mrs. Red Squirrel put down her basket. Let's not stop here, cried Bushytail. See the burrs? Don't open a bit. They are much too green to eat. But Mrs. Red Squirrel said, If we wait for the wind to rattle them out for us, chipmunks and children from over the hill will not leave us one. If we even wait until the burrs open, crows and jays will carry them off. Then she showed them how to cut off the little clusters of burrs, and soon they had their baskets full. What fun that picnic was. There were so many new things to see in that woods. Bushy Tail kept crying, Oh, look here, Hazel. And she was kept busy calling, Come quick, Bushy Tail. Bushy Tail had one eye open for the wonderful tree where all kinds of nuts grew side by side on the same branch. He could remember just how it looked in his dream. So he felt sure he would know it the minute he espied it. If there isn't one in this wonderful woods, he was beginning to think, I don't believe there is one anywhere. All of a sudden, Hazel and Bushytail heard their little playfellas give a scared little cry. They looked around quickly, but could see nothing to be frightened at. Only a man carrying a heavy black stick against his shoulder. He kept stealing up nearer and Hazel and Bushytail kept very still watching him. I think he has some peanuts for us, said Hazel Squirrel. What do we want to peanuts now? Come on, said Wishytail. And they ran around the trunk of the tree. Just then, a terrifying whiz went past their ears, followed by a deafening bang. They were so frightened. They ran and ran and did not stop until they were all out of breath. It was the only time they ever had even seen a man with a gun. After that, they never took nuts from men carrying sticks. That afternoon, Mrs. Red Squirrel made Hazel and Bushy Tail take a little nap. You know you will be up late tonight, she said. Mr. Bat had not forgotten his promise and just as soon as it began to get dark he was knocking at the door. He said there would be a moon so they need not bother a firefly to go to. Mrs. Red Squirrel and her two children went as far as the edge of the woods with them. Now you know the way you must come often 
they called after Bushytail and Hazel. Don't forget to come and see us too. And thank you for the nice time, they called back. You see, they had been well trained and did not forget their manners. I think I should like to live in the park, said Rusty to his mother. Bushy says there are no traps there or bad men with guns. Mrs. Red Squirrel was thinking she would like to have her groceries delivered to, so she answered, I think I shall speak to your father about it tonight. When Bushytail and little Hazel Squirrel finally reached the edge of the park, it was very late and they were very tired indeed. But when they got within sight of their homes, and saw the lights in the windows, they began to run again anyway. Do you think their mothers were glad to see them once more? Well, was your mother glad to see you that day she thought you were lost, when you really were not? And if you still want to know, if Bushytail ever found the wonderful tree where all kinds of nuts grew side by side on the same branch. Well, all I can tell you is that they never found it in the park and that they never, never ran away again. <laughs> oh dear, Bushytail and Hazel, the nutty squirrels, that's the end of the story. And Birdie, that was a lovely story, Birdie, wasn't it? <coughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do join me. Do join me for more stories for kids with me, Morel. Stories for kids. Yeah, next podcast coming up, next episode. So do join me once again for Stories for Kids with Morel Podcast. I'll see you then. Have a great day and be good and stay close to home. Okay, be good. Take care for now. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.